Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel Nat in Oz. If you are a sourdough lover and want to make a decent loaf yourself, you will need a strong and mature starter or natural wild yeast in your recipe. Today, we're building a thriving sourdough starter from scratch. Forget everything you've heard about daily discarding and wasting flour. I'm going to show you my method that uses minimal ingredients and creates a vibrant starter with minimal waste. Get ready for a simple, day-by-day -day guide to your new baking companion. What you need are a digital scale a slim, tall glass jar, a spatula, bread flour, and whole wheat flour. Our starter begins with just two ingredients and a simple mix. We'll combine 10 grams of whole wheat flour with 10 grams of room temperature water. Whole wheat has all the nutrients and microbes our starter needs for a strong beginning. Stir it until it's a smooth paste. Put a rubber band to mark the mixing level. Cover it loosely. Write the total weight of the jar and the starter. This will be our reference weight each time we do the discard and feeding routine. And place the jar in the warm place. 24 to 26 degrees Celsius is the optimum temperature to culture wild yeast. We'll check back in 24 hours. At 24 hours, there was not much reaction. So I waited until 36 hours. It is winter in Melbourne, and the temperature in the house is only 17 degrees Celsius. I can see some tiny bubbles. This is a good sign. If you culture the yeast in warmer weather, you will surely see much more reaction in the first day. We will feed the starter with the mixture of 10 part of bread flour and one part of whole wheat flour. The 10 one ratio of bread flour to whole wheat flour is a fantastic technique to get the best of both worlds. The strength of bread flour and the flavor and nutrients of whole wheat. I prepare this flour mix in a jar for future use. We will do the first feeding, but we're not discarding yet. To build strength, we're feeding our entire starter with 22 grams of our flour mixture and 20 grams of water. The secret is always use a little bit of flour more than water. Stir it in, mark the level, and get ready for a big change tomorrow. Eight hours after first feeding, I can see more activities in the jar. But on the first few days, these reaction happens mostly from bacteria, and only a few from yeast. From now on, we will feed the starter only when it is hungry, and already consumed all the flour. How do we know about that? By tipping the jar, if the starter becomes more liquidify, it means the yeast already ate all the flour and enters the starvation mode. In this situation, the yeast produces alcohol as a byproduct, which in turn liquidify the texture of the starter. We will now begin our daily feeding routine. We'll scoop out all but 20 grams of starter. This is the key to our low waste method. To our remaining 20 grams, we'll feed it our flour mixture and water in a 1-1-1 ratio. That's 22 grams of flour and 20 grams of water. Mix it well, and now we follow this same routine whenever the yeast eats all the flour in the jar. Be consistent. As the days go on, you'll see your starter get stronger and more predictable. It will consistently double in size and smell deliciously tangy. This is the sign of a healthy, happy culture.
After the fifth feeding in the total of nine days, the starter shows predictable growth. I will give it another feeding and use it for the sourdough bread. I have to admit that even I can make a sourdough bread from a 10 days old starter, but the result is not as good as the one that was made from my two years old starter as you can see in the video. But it's still worth the practice for those who are new to this artisan bread. Here are some useful tips to make the sourdough starter. Number one, start small, feed small. We have to discard the starter throughout the process. If you start from a large amount, you also end up throw away a large amount of flour. In this experiment, I wasted only 80 grams of flour in order to get the mature starter. Number two, feed only when the starter is hungry. In the first few days, we can detect this by tipping the jar. As the starter gets stronger, the texture will become thicker. We can tell that the starter ate all the flour when the starter level is below its highest point. Number three, in cold climate, the activity of the starter is very slow, but it is also difficult to die. In warm climate, Starter grows fast and dies easily, too. So if you culture the wild yeast in warm climate, you have to pay attention. Number four, always use a little bit more flour weight than water weight. Why we need to reduce the water content in the starter so that the carbon dioxide bubbles can be easily visible. Number five, use a slim glass jar. You will be able to detect the change in the starter easier if using a slim narrow jar because the starter expands upward more than sideway. Number six, provide the suitable environment for your starter. If you culture the starter in winter, you have to find the warmest spot in your house to put the starter, but don't put it in the oven. Even with only the light on, it can be too hot. In the tropical country, the situation is opposite. The starter grows super fast and dies fast too. A cooler box with some ice packs may solve the problem. If this guide was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more sourdough tips. I always post the new video about the tips and tricks in sourdough. Happy baking!